thank you for those kind remarks, and good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mr. President, students, faculty, colleagues, and visitors. Um, I'm also pleased to welcome you, and I thought we'd have some watchers, but I understand we do not right now. Is that correct? In, in the world? Okay. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm welcoming you to the Tufts University's third annual World Health Day, and we're very happy that the School of Engineering is uh, serving as a major sponsor for this event. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Dr. Elena Nelmova, Professor of Civil and Environmental Engineering and Associate Dean for Research in the School of Engineering for bringing together such a wonderful roster of speakers for this topic. And today's topic, as you know, is information and sensor technologies. We're also very fortunate to have Dr. Andre Igorov, Manager of Environmental Health Information System of the World Health Organization. And he, Dr. Igorov is our distinguished keynote speaker later this morning. And he will be highlighting the progress that the World Health Organization has made in the area of environmental and evidence-based health information systems to support public health and improve environmental policies. You've heard all about the World Health Organization, so I won't repeat uh, David's comments. Um, later today, we're going to have some breakout sessions where you'll be hearing from faculty who are working together on cutting-edge research in smart sensors, disaster management, visual analytics, and new devices. And in the next few minutes, I'd like to just briefly introduce to you the School of Engineering and to highlight some of the exciting research we're conducting that supports the themes of this conference. So, see if I can figure out how to work this. Good. So, um, for those of you who are not familiar, um, the School of Engineering was actually founded in 2001. Prior to that, uh, it dates back to the uh, 1800s. We've been teaching eight, uh, engineering at Tufts since 1865, and it was a college through um, 2001. Uh, we have about 100 full-time faculty um, and six departments, as well as the Gordon Institute, which uh, is a graduate program in engineering management. We have um, approximately 800 undergraduate students and uh, about 450 masters and 200 PhD students. And we've been emphasizing project-based learning, engineering leadership, and our undergraduate programs and interdisciplinary research in our graduate in programs. And in all of these, we're in in particularly interested in how technology and engineering and science can impact society for the benefit of humankind. Um, our research expenditures have grown greatly in the past five years, and uh, we also are, tr are very uh, entrepreneurial, and uh, we're now leading the university in IP disclosures. Because we're a small school, we have, and because we're interested in having impact on society, we have focused our strategic themes around this intersection between environment, humans and technology, and it's, it's, it's very fitting today that we would sponsor this conference because of the theme as well. And uh, you will see some of the research that is ongoing in the school. Um, this afternoon, there are going to be, as I mentioned, four breakout sessions. The first is chaired by Dr. Brian Tracy, who is a research faculty in the School of Engineering, and this will be focused on smart sensors. So the combination of low-cost, high-quality electronics and high-speed networking means that modern sensors are capable of collecting vast quantities of data to characterize environmental and health-related conditions. The volume of data that can be generated poses key challenges, and the power needed to transmit submit large amounts of data makes many applications cost prohibitive, and often the majority of data goes unanalyzed. So there's research going on in developing and networking smart sensors, those with embedded processors that can turn data into useful information. One of our faculty members who's, who will be in the panel this afternoon is uh, Professor Samir Sankosale in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. And this uh, slide depicts some of the research that Samir's group is working on that relates to flexible um, sensors. These are flexible smart patches or bandages that continu continuously monitor human health. And they're made from, from flexible materials like polydimethylsiloxane. The most critical component of the patch is the electronics. And um, if you want to operate these patches long term, you have to have an efficient energy source for these patches. And Professor Sankusali's research is in collaboration with Harvard, Harvard Brigham and Williams Ho Women's Hospital, Purdue University, and Tufts. And he's focusing on the systems and circuits that are really energy efficient, and he's trying to develop intelligent circuitry that can operate at, 
I can operate these electronics for the life of the device so that they don't need to pop out batteries and replace them. The second theme that you're going to see this afternoon is disaster management. And um, natural disasters, outbreaks, complex emergencies impact millions of lives worldwide each year, and they cause billions of dollars in damage. Uh, due to climate change and increased urbanization, the magnitude of these disasters and the size of the affected populations are increasing. And so there's a lot of research being um, undertaken right now on how we predict disasters and how we mitigate their impacts. Um, Professor Danielle Lantagne, one of our newest faculty in the School of Engineering, it has been involved uh, uh, greatly in, uh, in researching the cholera epidemic in, in Haiti that uh, appeared for the first time about 10 months after the devastating earthquake in January 2010. And uh, she worked with a, a group that found that uh, it was human intervention or human activity that caused this cholera outbreak. And Professor Lantaine um, joined us in 2012, and her re research focuses on developing, implementing, and assessing the effectiveness of water and sanitation interventions in developing countries. So we're delighted to have her on our faculty. She brings experience in the public health to the School of Engineering and the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. Um, on the environmental side, Professor Kurt Pinnell, who's also the chair of the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, is um, a part of an international team that's of scientists and engineers that are uh, serving as independent reviewers uh, for the United Nations to look at implementation of environmental restoration in Kuwait um, of, with, through... Uh, looking at the damage that resulted from the first Gulf War. And in our, in our School of Engineering, we're, we're looking at technologies that can help mitigate environmental contamination and help restore the environment to, to more pristine conditions. And uh, we're, we're pleased to have uh, Professor Pinnell participating in this activity. Switching gears a little bit, uh, we also have a breakout session on visual analytics. So as you know, today's world is ever more... <laughs> data-driven. Um, we have a great capacity now to collect and uh, store large amounts of information, um, but we have much less capacity to, um, to synthesize it and interpret it. And um, so this visual ana analytics field is looking at how um, we can develop tools uh, and support to depict and interpret information and gain insight from the, the data. And um, we're fortunate to have um, a number of faculty involved in this area on, on our, um, at Tufts. Professor Remco Chang, who is in the Department of Computer Science, is, uh, works in visual analytics. And uh, this, is, this um, figure depicts his visualization of political violence in present-day Thailand. But the interesting thing is how you're able to, to synthesize all this information and uh, provide some opportunity to sift through the data quickly and thoroughly and, and develop new insight. Um, Remco is principal investigator for this project that's part of the Minerva Initiative, which is a collaboration between the Department of Defense and university-based so social science researchers. And their work is helping to answer questions about the development and outcome of conflict and civil strife. But we can use these techniques to explore health, uh, public health issues worldwide as well. Professor Elena Nalmova is our uh, resident biostatistician who's um, employing visualization technology to cr create dynamic data maps. And she's interested in, in looking at trends <clears throat> and exploring the relationship between disease and environmental factors in particular. And, and her work is enabling us to pose new hypotheses about the origins of outbreaks, patterns of disease, timing of seasonal outbreaks, and clustering of diseases. And finally, the last breakout session this afternoon will focus on new devices. And there's so many exciting technologies that are de being developed. And, and if we start to look at ways they can be used to make the world a better place, I think there's many opportunities. Um, there's large segments of the world population that are tr in transition now from third world to first world societies. And um, as these countries develop, they're experiencing a lot of the growing pains and the health and environmental problems that, that we have had as an advanced technology, uh, advanced society. But we know now many ways that we can mitigate some of these problems, and hopefully we can bring some of our new knowledge to bear to help these developing countries. Um, we also have many ways that we can develop new technologies to, to enable better delivery of health care and better, um, a, a, um, better water 
purification, improved vaccines, et cetera. And I just am going to highlight a few of the faculty research in this area. We, one of our new faculty, Professor Isa Asatankin, who's in the Department of Chemical and Biological Engineering, is actually using polymer science to develop next generation membranes for water treatment. And prior to joining Tufts, she co-founded a startup company that's developing foul-resistant membranes for wastewater treatment that she designed during her doctoral research. And Professor Aisha Asatekin is focusing on using self-assembling polymers to make membranes with pores less than a nanometer in size so that she can separate out very, very small molecules that could be harmful. There, there, is an also exciting, there is also exciting research going on in silk-based technologies. Um, professors David Kaplan and Theo Amanetto are the chief um, faculty in, in investigating this area. Um, a research team led by David Kaplan at Tufts um, investigated whether silk protein could increase the shelf life of vaccines and antibiotics um, at higher temperatures. As you all know, there's a, a, a need for refrigeration and a long chain of cold chain to bring the um, vaccines and antibiotics from the manufacturer to the point of use. And um, what they've been able to do is to immobilize these vaccines in a silk film and enhance its, uh, the stability of this vaccine. And they were subject, they subjected the membrane to high temperatures, uh, 45 degrees C for six months, and the vaccine retained more than 80% of its potency. And so this looks like it could revolutionize the way we deliver vaccines. Um, also, using the Silk platform, they've also been able to, to develop um, using nanotechnology and nanopatterning, patterning, um, develop biocompatible electronic devices that can dissolve harmlessly in their surroundings after per functioning for a precise amount of time. And this work is Fio Amanetto's and David Kaplan's in collaboration with the University of Illinois. And these are called uh, transient electronics, and they're a new class of electronics um, that promises great applications in medical implants and environmental monitoring and other consumer electronics. And finally, we, we can't forget the human element here. Um, Tufts Engineering School is the home of a human factors engineering program. We have one of the uh, only engineering psychology uh, programs at the undergraduate level in the country. Um, this is joint with the Department of Psychology and Arts and Sciences. And uh, in human factors is a study of designing equipment and devices that fit the human body and the cognitive abilities of, the, of humans. And it's concerned with the intersection between the user, equipment, and their environment. It's a multidisciplinary field, incorporates, as I said, contributions from psychology, but also biomechanics, industrial design, graphic design, statistics. And um, we're very excited to, to be at the, at the nexus of this in the School of Engineering. And Dan Hannon, as you see pictured here, is, one of, is the uh, director of the program at the undergraduate level. And so we're trying to, to see what better ways that we can now take these devices, these new devices, and make them usable and, and adaptable for humans. So this is a quick overview of some of the work that's going on in the School of Engineering. I hope it whetted your appetite for what you're going to be discussing later today. And um, I am very happy to, to have been here to just welcome you all. And um, I wish you a very successful and enjoyable day. And now I would like to turn the podium back up to Professor Goot, uh, who will introduce Dr. Anthony Monaco.